Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the show. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Darnell Cox. I am a 55-year-old gerontologist and healthy aging coach, and today we are talking about retinoids. Which one is right for you? So I'll let you guys start coming on. Hi, everybody. Hello. I have a great show for you today. It's just me. I don't have a guest. I reached out to all of my dermatologist friends, and nobody wanted to do a one-hour show on retinoids. They're like, I don't think people want to learn you know, what di what the different types of retinoids are and what everybody should be using. And I said, I beg to differ. I think people do want to learn that because when you're faced with a lot of different products to choose from, it's important to know what you're choosing. So today is all about retinoids. Retinoids are the number one ingredient in all skincare lines. So it's important that we know retinoid, retinol, retinaldehyde, retinol, Trentinoin, what the hell does it all mean? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So I'll let you guys start coming on. Hello, hello, happy Saturday, everybody. Oh my God, uh, thanks about the hair. My hair is a struggle. I did a whole five, I did a five part series on hair growth. Um, I've been struggling with hair growth and hair loss for a long time. Um, because I stress shed. So make sure you check out those. Hi, Jeffrey, make sure you check out those lives. Okay, today is about retinoids. Which one is right for your skin? Um, and so we're gonna talk about that. Retinoids are a, a vitamin A derivative. So I did a post the other day and I had all of these stack of retinoids that I had gotten from uh, Mexico and I had them all out and I took a picture of them and I had so many questions about what do you use those all for? Oh, the mirror behind me. Oh, thanks so much. Oh, I have this window open too. Yeah, it's a little, I try to kind of cover up that mirror because it's a little distracting, but sometimes I'm a little bit off. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot to go through. So I want to talk about first retinoids. Retinoids I have this little graph here. This is from the Dr. Lee. You guys, if you don't watch the Dr. Lee and you're into skincare, make sure that you watch them. But I try to get people on to talk about what the what are the different types of retinoids. And, you know, it's very difficult to get dermatologists on unless it's like a service that they want to sell. So um, for an hour-long lecture, I learn everything I can, and then I give it to you. So retinoids are, is the big umbrella term. Okay, so whenever we talk about retinoids, we're talking about all of it. All the stuff that you can buy, you know, all the at-home stuff. I've got a lot of at-home products. We're gonna go over them. Which one is right for you? Which are the really strong ones? Because they're retinol. Which are the more gentler ones? Because they're a retinol, a retinol. So we're gonna go through all of that. But just for a heads up, when we talk about retinoids, we're talking about all of them. Okay, um, and the strength of the formula, so when we're talking about how strong do you wanna put, what, what strength do you wanna put on your face, it really depends on how close it is to the retinoic acid, and the retinoic acid is our Retin-A. That is our prescription, that's the one that you get as a prescription. So when you're looking at products on the shelf, and you're trying to determine which retinoid is right for you, you want to get something that is going to be, so this is a starter retinoid, a retinol. That's what we can find in our at-home products that are non-prescription. Retinaldehyde, you can sometimes refer to this as retinal. These are still at-home, they're still at-home products, but they're a lot more irritating and a lot more effective for your skin. And then we get to the retinoic acid. So I just wanna let you guys know, when we're talking about retinoids, sorry it's backwards, but when we're talking about retinoids, we're talking about all of them. Retinoids encompass all of them. From like the Olay 24, you know, factor 24 retinoid or the um, rock that you see on your supermarket shelves or your, your pharmacy shelves, all the way up to like the big guns that we find you know, in prescription strength. This is a 0.10. This is like a very, very strong um, retinoid. So when we're talking about which one is right for you, we don't all have the same kind of skin. So we wanna make sure that we're starting this out 
in a way that we're going to stick with it. Because I don't know about you, but I've been using retinoids for now, let's see, I'm 55. So I've been using retinoids for 35 plus years. 35 plus years I've been using retinoids. And I've, I've so I've gone through all of it. I've, I've stepped up and like, did did exactly what the doctor told me to do only to find that I it I was so miserable I had to stop and go all the way back down. So this is, you know, it's there's a guide that I have to step your retinoids up, but also you don't necessarily have to always do the strongest one available because there's a lot of, oh my gosh, did I not have my favorite out here? I used my favorite last night um, and I did not bring it out here to put in this little basket. I'm gonna have to go grab that, but I'll grab it in a second. Okay, so in order of the, the strongest to the weakest, we're looking at, so uh, sorry, in, in order of the weakest to the strongest, retinol, O-L, so retinoids, that encompasses everything. Retinol, O-L, is the weakest. And that's because there's two steps away before it becomes a prescription strength tretinoin, right? A retinoic acid, it's two steps away. So retinol is gonna be your more milder version that you can get without a prescription at home. So I wanna talk about, first of all, what do they, what do they even do and why should we be on these? Um, they were originally, retinoids were originally developed to treat acne. And in treating acne, what they found was that it was helping a lot with the adult acne. It was helping with fine lines and wrinkles and skin tone and texture um, and reducing pore size. And so midlife women who were struggling with acne did not want to get off of them. And thus began the whole journey of adding retinoids to almost all effective anti-aging, and I hate that word, but anti-aging skincare. Do retinoids help the health of the skin? They do. So even though we're not gonna focus on what we look like on the outside, the fine lines and wrinkles and all of that stuff, if we're gonna focus on the health of the skin, these help. Why? Because it increases cell turnover. So not only does it increase cell turnover, but it stimulates collagen production. It thickens the dermis. So two things, actually, there's a few things that are known to, to, to thicken the dermis, and we want a thicker dermis. We want thicker skin because our skin will naturally thin when we age. So there's two things that I use that thicken the dermis. One are retinoids. The other is microneedling, but also some chemical peels can also have that same effect. But what we want to do is thicken the dermis. So retinoids... Increase cell turnover, they stimulate collagen production, they thicken the dermis, they reduce fine lines and wrinkles, they treat hyperpigmentation and melasma, they even out skin tone and texture, they minimize pores, they treat acne, they improve the function of the skin. So we want younger, more youthful functioning skin and that's what leads, um, oh, Debbie, you stress shed as well. Oh, it's the worst, it's the absolute worst. Um, okay, but that's another subject. Debbie, if you want to DM me later, I'll send you the link to the five-part series I did on hair loss because um, there's many different um, treatments for hair loss, just as, as many treatments for hair loss as there are as, as reasons for that. It's a very complicated, very complicated subject. So if you DM me hair loss, I'll point you in the direction of where that will be. And another thing that I'm gonna start doing, you guys, don't, don't, nobody leave right now because I'm just gonna go off on a tangent for just one second. A lot of people ask to find these lives on my profile, on my, on my main feed. There, there's a certain thumbnail that's associated with these live shows. But what I'm, I, I kind of got a little smart here. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is when I, when I post to my main feed, I'll also share it to my story and then I'll add it in a highlight that is specifically for the live shows so that it's easy for you guys to go back and find those, those live shows. So Debbie, I will, when you, if you guys start seeing like a bunch of like 15 second clips of lives that are coming up, just know I'm doing that in my story so that I can put them in the highlight so that you guys can find them more easily. Because 
I create a lot of content, so it's kind of hard to find that. Okay, so now we know what retinoids do. We know the benefit of retinoids, which retinoid is best for your skin, and that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna start with right now. So if you're like me, you, you may have started retinoids in the past only to think like, God, I look like shit now. Like my skin is feeling, it's red, it's irritated. Like, I don't wanna do this. I look worse, I look more old, I look all of that. Yes, it does make your skin break out at first. And this is the, and I'm going to explain why. When people start with retinoids, a lot of people get discouraged because not only does it cause dryness and flaky and red and irritated, it can make your, your skin look older. But if you suffer from acne, it can make the acne worse temporarily. It's temporary, you guys. It's temporary. And the reason is because when you're exfoliating your skin and you're creating that cell turnover, all of your acne is not conveniently located right on the surface, right? It starts from down, down below. So can you, in starting a retinoid temporarily, like for about three to four weeks, make your skin worse? Yes, but there's hope. We don't have to go as big as you know, if you were to go to a dermatologist and they said, hey, I want to put you on a 0.05%. This is the one I've used for years, um, this, this percentage, but I go back and forth. I need to go get my different gel. Um, but a dermatologist might say, I want to start, I want to start you on this. And you may start on something like this and be absolutely miserable. And then you don't want to, you don't want to continue. So when we're talking about which retinoid is best for you if you're starting out or you're starting out again, if you're giving it another try, you're gonna start small, you're gonna start small. You don't necessarily need to start with this. You can start with um, a retinol. So we can start with a retinol, which because it's two steps away from this, this is the retinoic acid, this is tretinoin. Because a retinol is two steps away it's going to be less irritating. It's also gonna be a little bit less effective, a lot less effective, but it's a great place to start. So my first tip is if you're new to retinoids, if you are starting it again because you can't use it, you can't use it because it's too irritating, it makes your skin crazy, whatever it does, makes you break out more. All of that is true, but we're you have to get past that. Push past that little part of making it worse and then we get to the point part where your pores are minimized and your your less fine lines and wrinkles and you've got younger functioning skin and it's more even toned your pores are smaller your less breakouts there's a lot of stuff that happens when you can get used to using a retinoid so the first tip is to start small with a retinol so choose your product wisely and then I'm going to start bringing you into why. So why is because of, of course, we're now I'm just telling you again, we're two steps away from the big guns, right? We're two steps away in a retinol. So here's a retinol. This is my top retinol that you can find at home. And so here's a retinol and you're two steps away. It's got to be converted to make this stronger. So my number one choice for an at-home retinol, if you guys are just now beginning, or even if you're forget about just beginning. If you're just, if you want to just say like, Hey, I want to step my retinol down a little bit. I've got a function coming up. I don't want to be peely or red or anything like that. This, if you even just started with something like this and stayed here, you're still increasing cell turnover. You're still diminishing fine lines and wrinkles. You're still treating acne. You're still helping melasma. You're still changing the function of your skin. Okay, so this is my top one. I love this. Um, this is the over, this is an over counter retinol. Um, it also has great supporting ingredients such as peptides and oat and willow bark. It's, it helps to soothe the skin as it's treating. So this is my number one in terms of in terms of a retinol. So over the counter retinol that's going to be a little bit less irritating. This is still a great product, and you still might get irritated from this. My husband, when he uses this, sometimes get, gets irritated and he goes to like every other day. So we'll get into that as well, but when we're just talking about products to start with, 
This is a great starter retinol, a great starter retinol. Okay, the other one that I really like as a starter retinol, this is by The Ordinary. Um, this is retinol 1% in squalane. I love this because it's like a, look, I'm gonna show you guys. You know like your vitamin C serums, how they're like very watery? That's how this is, it's very watery. So it's in a squalane, which is like a moisturizing, component. So when you put this on, which I use this for my whole body, you guys, your skin doesn't stop here, right? You want younger functioning skin. You need to find products that you can use for your whole body. So you can just do a couple of little drops of this and you've got, you know, you can spread this on your whole arms, but this is great because it comes in various strengths. So this is the strongest of the ones that the ordinary offers over the counter retinol in a squalane. So the squalane is natural moisturizer. So it's very moisturizing if you've got dry skin or you don't want that dry cracked feel, that redness that, that normally happens. There's a lot of ingredients in here that kind of help to diminish that and makes it make it a lot easier to use. So um, this is the retinol 1%. They do have it in a, I believe in a 0.25% and also a 0.5%. Um, but this, because it has the squalane in it, I never get irritated with this. And this is one of my favorite ones to use on the whole body. I'm gonna get to the body in a little bit, but this is one of the ones that I use on my whole body, but, and I love this. So that's my second choice in terms of retinol, over-the-counter retinols. Um, another one that I like, which I'm out of, uh, maybe I'm not. Hold on one second. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see if I can get my other products. I can do rock. Uh, hold on, everybody. I don't have the rock. I'm out of the rock. Okay. I'm back. Sorry. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> this is the one that I was going to tell you about. I am obsessed with this different gel. It's a Dapoline, and I'm going to get to a Dapoline. Adapalene is not on this list. It's a third generation retinoid. Um, and I'm. this is great for, for acne. It's the number one pick for acne that I have, but I love this also as a starter retinol. So if, we, if we're doing a, ret, um, not a retinol, it's a retinoid because it's adapalene. But I love this as a starter retinoid because it's low irritation. Um, but the results of this are incredible. It used to be prescription only, and I don't even understand why it was prescription only, because it's low irritation made for sensitive skin, but also the number one thing for acne, which I'll get to as well. So this is also a really great starter um, retinoid for everybody, different gel. It's on my Amazon storefront. I think everything that I'm gonna talk about today, because I wanted to make it easy for you guys, um, I, I put it on my on my Amazon storefront. Somebody said, just joined, which one was that? Um, okay, so, so what I've gone over so far for starter retinols, I love the Paula's Choice. 1% um, retinol treatment, again, it's on my Amazon store. You just go in my link tree, click on that, click the little A for Amazon, and it'll go into my skincare storefront, and then all of these are right at the top, because I wanted to make it super easy for you guys. Um, the second one I love is the Ordinary. This is a 1% in squalane. I'm obsessed with this, um, especially for the full body. Ooh, hold on. I know this is raining. All right. Okay, and then also for a starter, a starter retinoid, I love the Different Gel, which is actually Adapalene, which is a third generation retinoid. So it's not in this. It's not a retinol or retinal or um, a prescription, but it's a, a Adapalene. And it's great because it's great for sensitive skin. So if you have rosacea, if retinoids make your rosacea worse, this is something that I have found is great for that. Okay, and then also I wanna just... Let me make sure I'm like scrolled all the way up. Oh, sorry, I'm not scrolled all the way up. Um, okay, so now if, if questions come up, I can see them. Um, another one that I am that I love that I'm out of. It's a little purple container, and it's Olay Retinol 24 Plus Peptides. Listen. I know it's not, Olay is not like your grandmother's Olay. They've got great products between Olay, who's been doing this forever, and Rock, R-O-C, who's been doing this forever. 
Those are great starter retinoids that you can get in your, in your local pharmacy or grocery store, right? So Olay, 20, Olay Retinol 24, it's an amazing product for first time retinoid users and it's moisturizing so that you don't have to put moisturizer over the top of it. And also Rec, Rock Retinol Correction Max Hydration. They've been, they were the first ones. You guys, this is interesting. I only have this one right now. Um, this is the one that, this is my daytime one. I ran out of the nighttime one, but I like this for daytime because it is, it has a sunscreen in it um, for chest, neck and face cream, um, multi-correctional. I like this, but I just wanted to say, I'm just using this for this uh, brand here. Rock makes a, a Rock Retinal Correction Max Hydration Cream. It's an orange bottle. It's normally in my in my whole skincare uh, regimen, regimen over there, but I have, ran out. I love, I love it because they were the first ones. Rock was the first ones to take something like a, a retinol and stabilize it. So they could take something like this and stabilize it in an, in a product that you don't need a subscription to. Rock did that. And they've been formulating this stuff for over 50 years. I love that. Um, my dear, does massaging face help firm up the face? Does massaging your body help firm your body? Not really, right? Massaging your face doesn't firm up the face, but what it does is it lymphatically drains. So when you're going in for a facial massage or you're using like a, one of these kind of devices where you're, you know, it's using like a sonic vibration or you're using one of the beauty rollers, those things are lymphatically draining. So it doesn't tighten your skin, but it lymphatically drains, which can help visually chisel out your skin. Okay, we're moving on. Okay, so now we just got done with the retinol. So we know the, our favorite products at home to use. They're great starter retinoids. They're also great just to stay there. You're doing something for your skin if you are staying in this area. You're still doing something great for your skin. And to be honest with you, I, have all, I use all of these products. These are all in that same family of retinoids, but it's in the less you know, the less effective, slightly less effective, less irritating form because I don't want my skin thrashed all the time. So I will go back and forth and I do cycle my retinoids. I might use this one one day and then I'll come back over, you know, and use this one maybe three or four days a week. But what I've been doing in the summer, which I am, which I have been loving is I started just using a different gel five days a week, and then the other two weeks put doing something a bit stronger through the summer. Now I'm back to like slowly stepping it up to the higher um, concentration. Okay, um, let's go on. So now we've already gone done, done with the retinols. We're gonna go to retinaldehyde. Okay, so these are the ones that we talked about that are a little less sensitive. Now we're going to a retinaldehyde, which is another word for retinal. A-L-R-E-T-I-N-A-L. This is an O-L, retinol, which is less irritating. So retinol is less irritating. When you're looking at packaging, you wanna look for retinol if you're starting out. It doesn't mean these, this isn't gonna be irritating. It's still, it's still a retinoid. It's made, you're, you're made to like try to get used to it for a little while first. It still might be a little bit irritating, but of all of the retinoids, the retinol is gonna be a great starter, and then you can see if your skin can handle something else. We're now moving into retinal, and so when you look at retinaldehyde or retinal, it's one step away. Retinol is two steps away from tretinoin, from retinoic, from, from, sorry, from a retinoic acid. It's two steps away. This means it's, it's weaker. When we're looking at a retinal, we're looking at one step away. Those are gonna be much stronger. What product has the highest retinol? Um, you know what, that's a really difficult question to answer and I'll tell you why. When you're looking at a retinol, now remember, these are the less irritating ones that you can find over the counter. I'll hold up a few of the ones that we spoke about already. Um, when you're looking at a retinol like that, I think the, the, I'm, I'm sure I had more, but when you're looking at retinol, there's lots of other ingredients in this. 
If you're looking at something like this, all you've got is tretinoin. When you're looking at a retinol, um, they, there's other ingredients. And so it's really difficult to say what is the strongest retinol. But this one, I would say, is probably my favorite because it's got a good amount of retinol in it, but it also has other things in it that are soothing to the skin. So if you had to pick one starter, I would do the Paula's Choice. Um, my second, well, yeah, it's the Paula's Choice or the Ordinary, or my favorite is the Deferin Gel. And the interesting thing about the Deferin Gel, which is Adapalene, is that the research coming out, I just lost it. Um, the research coming out is that there's studies, there's, there's a lot of studies in, in, in retinoids because they are the number one active ingredient in all skin, in all aging skincare. But th this type of, this type of product, which is the Adapalene, they have found, they have done a side-by-side -side comparison between this and a 0.05 tretinoin and they're, they're comparable in the results without the irritation, without the prescription. So very, very, very interesting. So that's a very difficult question to answer because when you're looking at a retin retinol, which you're finding on your store, you know, on your grocery store shelves, when you're, or your pharmacy shelves or Amazon, but when you're looking at that, there's so many other ingredients that go in that you support that active ingredient making it more active or soothe that active ingredient making it less irritating. Does that make sense? So that's a really difficult question. When we're only talking about prescription strength, then that's a super easy question to answer, right? You've got a 0.1%, you have a 0.05%, you know, you have a 0.025%. So if you just you know, no, understand where the decimals are, it's, that's very easy to see. So you could see this is the weakest at the 0.025%, right? That's the least amount in terms of concentration. The 0.05% is the next one. Um, and this is double the strength of the 0.025%, right? That makes sense, right? And so then when we're going the one step above that and a 1%, we're doubling the 0.05%. That's really easy to see which one's stronger. Very easy. When you're talking about a retinol or even a retinal, a retinal to hide, the retinal, which I'm going to tell you my, my top two for those, um, it's hard to determine that because there's all these other active ingredients that either play well um, and boost that up or they're made to kind of help with the irritation. So now we're gonna move to a retinal, okay? And a retinal, like I said, is one step away from a retinoic acid, which is tretinoin. So it's one step away, it's gonna be a lot harsher on your skin. I'm so glad you're liking this. You guys, um, I appreciate that, this is so great. I, I love this, I love that you guys are liking this. I wanna say this, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm a 55 year old, gerontologist, which is somebody who studies the aging process. I look at skin as the largest organ because it is our largest organ. You can tell a lot by somebody's health by looking at their skin, um, but also it needs to be addressed. And so, oh wait, somebody just said, do you cleanse and then use your retinoid? I'm gonna get into the steps in just a second. I'm gonna get into the steps. Hang with me, you guys, hang with me. We're now at retinal, retinal to hide. When you guys look for a product on the shelf, I want you to notice the OL starter, OL. This is AL, retinaldehyde is going to also be retinal. This is my little notes, um, retinal. Okay, so retinal is retinaldehyde. Now you can find products that are retinal. This one I love by Murad. That's why I said you're doing great. You look 30, thanks. If I look 30 and I'm 55, it's all this stuff. Okay, um, so this is Murad. Murad, I've been, I turned my mother onto Murad. I want to say I was in my 20s when I discovered Murad. And since then, I've gone on to other things. But my mother still uses Murad and has their whole system 
um, that they do. And it's a, this is a great company, you guys. It's a great company. This is Murad Resurgence. It's retinal. See, we're looking at the, the AL there. AL as opposed to the OL, okay? Retinol, retinal. Would you guys have ever been able to find, like when you look at this, it's so close. Nobody's gonna put retinaldehyde. Nobody wants to put retinaldehyde on a bottle. So they'll put retinal. And you know that this is a stronger over-the-counter retinoid, right? You look at the back of this and there's a lot of other ingredients in it, but it does say, um, potent treatment with retinal, one of the most efficacious forms of retin-A, helps to restore firmer appearance in the skin and shows loss of volume, sagging, and thinning. So this is going to be stronger. So when you're using these two things, if you've got an event that you have to go to and you're just starting out, don't start with this one. Start with something that's a little bit more tolerable slowly then you might be able to work up to a retinal i'm going to show you my other great product that i love it's a retinal this is also a retinal okay so when you look at this i mean in the title in the in the title they have it here retinal they have the al real big because they're trying to let you know um but if you look here i don't know if i can try to get this in focus this says patent combination See how retinaldehyde is the first, I don't know if you could see that. Retinaldehyde is the first word there. But this, we're looking at retinal. So retinal, retinal, these are way stronger. They're in between, right? They're in between products like this and products like this. So it's a great stepping stone. Um, also, you can even just stay here. There's nothing that says you need to go as big as possible. Nothing says that because also if you've been following my protocol, you know, that weekly protocol that, that I have, if you don't have this, just DM me the word protocol, but it's the calendar that shows you all my at-home skincare devices and how I incorporate those all in. If you're doing something like this consistently with your skin, you might not ever want to go as big as something like this. It might be okay for you to like live in this little world. This is fine. I'm here, I wanna say I'm in this world more than 50% of the time. And in the summer, I even do one better. Gosh, that, that product is just, it's elusive. There it is. <laughs> in the summer, I even do better and I go even more sensitive um, with the different gel. And I'm telling you, I'm getting amazing results with this. Amazing results. Okay, back to the lecture. Back to the lecture. So we've now gone over retinol with an OL. Retinol with an OL. Hard to determine the differing strengths in a retinol. You just have to try them. Of the ones that are out there, and trust me, I've tried a lot of different retinols. Um, of the ones that are out there, this is one of my all-time favorites, along with the Ordinary with the Squalane. Okay, so much more tolerable for most people. Um, these, the Retinal, which is Retinal to hide, this steps it up a little bit more, right? And this is the, I think you guys can see this, I don't even... I don't, I'm really terrible at, I'm really terrible at uh, foreign languages. <laughs> and, although I do speak a little bit Bahasa, um, Indonesian. But um, yeah, so this is um, one of the other ones that I think that is like really, it, this is a, I don't wanna say harsh, but it is a, these are very effective ingredients. When I use these, I do end up doing like a full, um, kind of heavy cream over the top of them and the same with my retinoids. Okay, so let's talk about acne for just a second because when our hormones are changing, so now we've gone over like if you're a beginner, beginner to retinoids, we know where to start, right? If we're kind of in the middle of the road, we know where to start or we kind of want to bump things up a little bit different times of the year, we know where to go. With acne, there are two main the, the two main things that they have you do with acne is one is benzoyl peroxide, 
right? A benzoyl uh, peroxide wash um, and different gel. So this is great for acne, but even though it says acne treatment on here, just know that this used to be only for acne. That's how it was designed. Tretinoin, the prescription strength tretinoin, they did all the research to treat acne. So when you come across a product that is an acne treatment, and you're in midlife, do not be afraid of this product. This product is your friend. This product will help. And in fact, a lot of times what I'll do is when I do a, um, go to my 0.05% tretinoin, I'll still use this different gel right on my eyes, right on my eyes. I'm telling you, it's great for crow's feet, great for crow's feet. So you gotta know what you're taking um, before you know what you're buying, you got to know what it's doing before you, you buy it. Nobody would ever think you'd put an acne treatment for crow's feet. I'm telling you, it works. It works because it's still creating cell turnover. It's still, you know, helping with hyperpigmentation. It's doing all the same stuff. Okay. So for acne, again, it's, it's all vitamin A derivative. So retinoids are vitamin A derivative. When you're taking like an oral medication like Accutane, if you've got cystic acne, that is only something that you can be prescribed by a dermatologist. But if you've got cystic acne and you're not in child bearing age anymore, you could go on something like Accutane where you take a really high concentration of vitamin A orally. Again, I'm not promoting this. I'm just giving you information on what is out there for treatment. Um, and so that is, again, you can take vitamin A, you can eat a lot of vitamin A foods as well or take vitamin A supplements, um, just not too much because it does accumulate in your body and is fat soluble, but you can do something like that that also improves the health of your skin. When we're talking about acne though, you want to do a benzoyl peroxide wash. You can do a prescription strength ret uh, retin-A or tretinoin, but this also works great for acne. Okay. Keep going. Okay, so those are my top picks for acne. Oh wait, there was, I did have a low, uh, there is another one for acne, but I don't even know why I would even say it because I, this is the one that I use, but they do have a La Roche-Posay um, that's also a 1% uh, adapalene gel. So that's, that's what, you know, you have that. Okay, so the best overall, like if you were just to ask me like, hey, what is, what's your, what do you think is like the best thing? Just overall, retinoids. I would still say you want to do, you want to aim for, again, I'm not here. I don't live in this world all the time. Um, well, it's not true because I do use them for my body as well, but you want to aim for this. This is kind of the gold standard. This is what a lot of the research has been done on is the 0.05% tretinoin. So when you look at studies, um, and I pour through a lot of studies, um, and I, I did actually find the study of these two, and it's shocking how irritating this can be for some people and how non-irritating this can be, and the results are very similar in the, this study. So pff, mind, mind blowing. But in terms of my best overall, in my best overall prescription retinoids, we're looking at um, a tretinoin of various degrees. Now I do use all of these at various times. Somebody asked me when I put that story up, what are all those for? Well, if I'm doing my body and I'm gonna get to body in a little bit, I'll put a dollop of this into like an SA cream and a scoop in my hand, rub that together and that becomes my body, uh, my body lotion. You do need a prescription for, for tretinoin. Um, so all of these are prescription based unless you go to Mexico, <laughs> which I did and they're like 50 bucks. So I, I tend to stock up when I go to Mexico because you can buy them at the airport. I, just, I don't understand why, I don't understand why this has to be prescription, but it is prescription. And I think the reason is because you cannot use this when you're pregnant or nursing. And anything that you cannot use when you're pregnant or nursing, you really do need to have a prescription. Um, this used to be prescription. The different gel adapalene used to be prescription. Now you can get it without a prescription. It's on my Amazon store. I use the heck out of this. I also like to use this on my neck because it's non-irritating. So it's a retinoid I can use on my neck. Um, but in terms of prescription strength, there's three different options. Okay. You've got the 0.025, which like I said earlier, this is going to be the weakest of them. It's starter one if you want, or 
delicate area around the eyes or you just stay here. Second one, this is like the gold standard. This is where you kind of want to aim for. Not that we have to compare ourselves to other people, but this is what the studies show, okay? This is what the studies show. Um, this is the one, the 0.05. Now the one point, the 0.1%, that's double this. 0.05 to a 0.1, that's double this. This eats my skin up like battery acid. It's not great for my skin at all. I do have a little bit of sensitive skin, probably because I do so much shit to it, but I do have a little bit of sensitive skin. So what I, what I tend to use this for is for my body, places like my elbows, the back of my arms, my, my tops of my knees, my abdomen. I'll use this for my body mixed with a little bit of an SA cream by CeraVe. So that's what I, so that's, these are my favorite in terms of prescription strength. They also have something which I don't have. So you guys might want to write this down. It's called a Trino, Altrino, A-L-T-R-E-N-O. It is a prescription strength tretinoin that is formulated with other types of ingredients that helps ease the irritation. So when you go to your dermatologist, if you can't make it to Mexico or you don't live in a city where, where Retin-A is not, where tretinoin is not um, prescription or is only available in prescription, then you can ask your dermatologist if they are available, if they are, uh, you know, if they can prescribe Altrino, which is a prescription tretinoin with a lot less irritation because of the other ingredients and the formula that they make it. Okay, and then another thing that I wanted to tell you guys is they're coming out with a lot of these different um, pharmacies, skincare pharmacies that give you prescription strength products through the mail. Now they do have a staff of dermatologists there. You do have to complete a survey. Um, it is shipped to you every single month, but I was doing this for a little bit just to see what they had to offer. And this is by the agency. I have no affiliation with any of these people, um, other than some of the ones that are non-prescription, I did put on my Amazon store so it makes it easier for you guys. But this you can go, this is the agency and they, they have you do this whole, oh, it's formulated with glycerin and hyaluronic acid. Thank you, Tiff, thank you, Tiff um, Underwood. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I think that what you're talking about is the Altrino, right? That's what they put in there to kind of make that not as irritating. When you, if you decide like, I don't want to see a dermatologist or you don't have healthcare and that's not within your wheelhouse, but you do still want a prescription and you can't make it to Mexico, um, you could figure out how to get on or how to get on something like this, which is you go to agency.com and they will have you do a survey and then they send you the product and they step it up each month. So they start you small and then they gradually increase your formula. I like to play around with my stuff a lot more. If I were to be on a formula like, like this, um, where it was just sent to me every month, it doesn't give me the liberty to play around with all of my other skincare stuff that I like so much. So I tried this out just to be able to share it with a couple of my clients, my one-on-one -on -one clients who were interested in doing like a one-stop shop for skincare and wanted to be on a prescription tretinoin and wanted to be not able, not have to go to the dermatologist all the time. So this was something that I looked into for them. I was on it for a couple months. I like it, but it just doesn't give me the freedom like to change what I'm using in the summer or to change what I'm using if I feel like I've got an event coming up and I want, I know how to then figure out what I need to use and what I need to back off on to get my optimal skin for that particular day. Um, if I'm doing something like this, I don't really have that opportunity. So, but that is an option. That is an option in terms of prescription strength, tretinoin, without having to see a dermatologist um, or go to Mexico. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. I want to talk about body retinols because Listen, if you know, we, we already talked about what the benefit of being on a retinoid in your skincare is it does. It's fine lines and wrinkles, it's uneven skin tone and texture, it's reducing pore size, it's addressing the health of the skin, it does stimulate collagen, all of that stuff. So why are we only doing it from here up? That makes no sense to me. Retinoids go on my body every single day, not necessarily on my neck because the skin on our neck is super, super fine. And for me, I found once I've gone through menopause, it's very difficult for me to put anything on my neck that doesn't just irritate the hell out of it. 
So I have been doing um, a different gel coated with Aquaphor at night. This is what I've been using and I love it. Um, somebody asked, does it work on scars? It works on any sort of acne scars for sure. Um, in terms of other scars, it's re that's a really difficult question. It depends on the scar. It depends on what the trauma was. It depends on if it's keloid. depends on if it's white, if it's whatever. Just know this, much like red light therapy, which I wish I had my little my panel here, much like red light therapy, red light therapy will help with almost everything when it comes to skincare. Retinoids are no different. So could it potentially help with scarring? Absolutely, it could. Could it help with stretch marks? Absolutely. Crepey skin, yes, crepey skin. I'm getting crepey skin on my belly, tops of my legs. Like we get, <clears throat> excuse me, we get crepey skin as we get older because we have that loss of collagen production. So that loss of collagen production starts like in our mid twenties, we lose one to 3% a year. And so we want things that thicken up our skin, retinoids thicken up our skin along with microneedling. But just like red light therapy, it helps with multiple things. So can a retinoid help with scarring? Absolutely it can. And if it doesn't, it's going to just make the overall look of the skin more youthful. Hope that helps. Okay, so there's a couple of body ones that I do want to talk about. I currently am out and I thought last night, I'm like, well, I can Instacart this from Sephora. But right now I'm really loving putting a little dab of this into this. I'm going to show you how I do this, okay? Just because it's like you wouldn't stick the whole thing in, although you probably could. I don't know how stable that would be. And so what I do is I'll take a little dollop of this is a uh, CeraVe SA cream, salicylic acid cream. I, I did a whole live on chemical peels. Does anybody remember that? The whole live I did on chemical peels. Um, salicylic acid is a BHA acid. It's in the Paula's Choice toner that I like to use that is a BHA. Um, it helps unclog pores, blackheads, whiteheads, um, all of that stuff helps with, um, what is it called? That little keratosis pilaris. I, I think that that's what, I just pulled that out of my brain. Um, I think that that's what it's called, but it's like those little kind of uh, clogged pores. Sometimes I'll get those on my legs from like my workout clothes. This totally helps, even this by itself, which this isn't a retinoid, but it still helps. And it's relatively inexpensive. This is the SA cream for cream for rough and bumpy skin. It's a salicylic acid. So what I do is I'll take a daub, a dab, whatever you want to call this. I'll take a dab like this. You could do it on the outside of your your hand as well. And then I'm gonna to have to wipe this off because I'm not I'm not gonna be able to. I just like dumped that. I'm not gonna be able to put this on my whole body. But so then I will take a one percent and do like a little bit. I wanna say like a nickel size or a dime size. So this will still last a very long time. Let me see if I can show you. So in that mess right there, it's mostly salicylic acid and a couple, like I wanna say a, a dime size amount of, of the 1% um, prescription tretinoin. So then I would take this just like that. And then this would go on my on my body. Okay, I'm not gonna waste it. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste it. So this would go on the back of your hands for sure. Everything goes. Do not wash your hands after you do your nightly skincare. You guys, this is a little bonus. Don't wash your hands after you do your nightly skincare. It all goes on the back of your hands. Make sure that you're, you know, you're bending your knuckles as you're doing it, so it gets into those lines. Otherwise, if you're doing this, you're missing the opportunity. You're missing the surface area in here. That gives you the surface area. So that's what I do in terms of body. That's my, what my favorite thing to do with a retinoid in terms of body is to mix these two together. Um, but that said, they do make ones specifically for your body. I think they cost a little bit more than my do it at home uh, situation, they cost a little bit more. But Versed Retinol Body Lotion, it has a squalene and a, a, um, a hoba oil and it's moisturizing. Um, so that's a really good one. Paula's Choice also makes a body, there goes that alarm again. Um, Paula's Choice also makes a whole body, um, oh my gosh. 
You guys are gonna have to hold on. I have to turn off this alarm. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Now we have some weird music going on back there. <laughs> Shit, I have to throw that alarm away. Like this is the second time that it's happened to me. Okay, so Versed Retinol Body Lotion, that's one. Polish Choice Body um, Retinol, that's another. My favorite is just doing it yourself and mixing it around and doing it for your whole body. Do not neglect your body. If you want younger functioning skin, it shouldn't just be here. It should be on your whole body as well. So you guys, I'm gonna, Post this to my main feed right after this. Is there any questions? Um, this will be posted to my main feed. I hope that that helps in for you guys to, when you're choosing your retinoid, I hope that what you've learned here today with the retinol or the retinal or the retin, you know, the tretinoin that you that you've kind of understand how you can do that. I do want to let you know though, when you're starting, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to start to use a retinoid, and then I'm gonna jump off of here. So it's flaking, redness, peeling, irritation. All of these are side effects, and this is what stops some people from pushing through that bad part to get to all of the benefits that retinoids have to do. So what can you do? You wanna start small, and a lot of that has to do with starting with the over-the-counter retinols, and then maybe moving to a retinol, and then maybe moving to a prescription. Start small. Another way you can do this is, so choosing the right retinoid to start with is super important. Important. But even if you're starting on something, let's say like this, like the gold standard, I, <laughs> I kicked out of my guess. Okay, so um, if, if you're starting with something like this, which is the gold standard, don't worry about that. You can start with a pea size amount so we're looking at a pea size amount. Let me show you what that looks like, you guys. Let me show you what it, oh, this is, I don't have this one open, but that's okay, I'll open this. Oh, that's even too much. Hold on, I'm gonna show you the amount that we would use to start and how you would get that on your whole skin. So let's say, that's a pea size amount. Do you see that? That's a pea size amount. If I were to do this on my face, which I'm not gonna do right now, because I've got somewhere to go afterwards, and I've got a little bit of um, tinted sunscreen on, but that's a pea size amount. What you would do is you would take this and make dots on your face, all over your face, okay? So you're making little dots all over your face. That's still that pea size amount. So I would do this to where my face was evenly spread with dots. Then I would rub it around. That way you're not taking a dot and trying to spread it evenly. It's better if you make the little dots all over your face and then you spread it around. Okay, so that's the first tip. Um, the second tip, so evenly spreading it is important. You can also do every three days. So I would never start this out and do every single day. You're gonna be miserable. It's best if you do one day, then wait for three days, do every three days for the first month. And then the second month, you would switch to every other day. So every other day. The third month, if you, if you have, you know, you're still going to get red and flaky and irritated. It's still going to happen. But if you've got it under control, if, you've, if you're handling it, then the goal is to step up and use it every single night. Not in the daytime, but at night. It, 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 is, it kind of... Um, decreases its effectiveness when hit with sunlight. So retinoids are made for to be used at night. So then you would gradually step up to every single night. But you start with once every three days, then go to every day, then go to once a, once a day. That's like the optimal way to do it. Um, but you gotta be patient. The peak irritation, say you start this and you start every third day. You might still have irritation for two to three weeks. Stay at the every third day then. Once that irritation starts going away, move to every other day, right? You still might have irritation for a few weeks. That's okay. 
wait for it to dissipate, and then you go every day. Um, and then you can also use a barrier. So sometimes when I use a retinoid, I'll around my nose right here, and my eyes, and around my chin, around my mouth, get super irritated, the most irritated part. So I might get dry and flaky and irritated on my chin, but my cheeks, using the exact same amount, are fine. That's like, oh my God, my cheeks look great. My forehead looks great. But around my eyes, around my nose, around my mouth, it's normally the places on your face that move the most. So when you're moving your face the most, those are the thinnest parts of your face those are the faces, the parts of your face that are gonna be more irritated if you are one that gets irritated. So what you could do is you could do two, one of two things. You can create a barrier before. So you take a little dollop of Aquaphor or Vaseline or even like your favorite cream that doesn't have an active in it. But I like to do, use a barrier of a Aquaphor. I put that around the corners of my nose, around my mouth a little bit, maybe a little bit on my eyes, although I would use the different gel around my eyes. And then you fall, let that sit a little bit and then you follow it up with this. In that way, you're creating like a barrier so that the retinoids got to get through this barrier first. So what it does is it, it decreases the amount that actually comes in contact with the skin. It decreases the effectiveness, but it decreases the irritation as well. And sometimes it's in those places that we need to decrease the irritation and that's what's causing us to stop. We're like, I can't handle this. My eyes are like flaking like crazy or it's burning around my nose. Use a barrier, use a barrier first and then just keep going forward. Another way you can do this is you can do it like a sandwich. You can put on your favorite cream, then do your little dots of, retin of your prescription strength tretinoin, rub that all in and then do another layer of, of cream. So you've gone cream, tretinoin, cream. You've made a sandwich. And in doing that, you decrease the irritation as well. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I think that's all I have. Um, if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding, do not use a retinoid. That's why it's, I believe it's prescription is because it, it will cause or can cause some pretty serious birth defects, especially if you're taking like an oral retin-A, like a tretinoin, that's a giant no-no. Um, but even applying stuff top topically, it still gets in your bloodstream. So you do not want to be on a retinoid if you're pregnant. They do say that Differin gel is safe for pregnancy, but it's best to just ask your doctor first about this before you even try it if you're pregnant or you're nursing. Otherwise, you can do... Oh, I even brought this. Look, sometimes I'm prepared and sometimes I'm not. If you're pregnant or nursing and you still want an active ingredient, azelaic acid has no effect on pregnancy, no effect on the fetus, no effect on nursing. So this is a really good product. Put your retinoids down until you're done making and feeding a baby with your body. Once you're done with that, you know, while you're doing that, you can do an azelaic acid. This one is probably my favorite by Paula's Choice. It's almost empty. Um, so you can use something like that. And then once you're done nursing, you can start slowly stepping it back up, maybe starting with a retinol, an over-the-counter that's not as, as uh, you know, not as irritating. Then you can maybe move to a retinol, which is going to be more irritating. You still might need to sandwich this. You still might need, this is going to, this is like heavy duty. So you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start by using this every day either. I'd probably start this with every other day or every third day. And then you can get into the big guns here, which are the prescription strength. I hope that helped everybody. I hope that that makes sense. Okay. Next week, you guys, next week, we're starting the giveaway already. I'm, for those of you who've been with me for a couple of years, you know, that I do a giveaway every holiday season. And normally it's like, I'll do three or four days of giveaways, but I have so much stuff coming in. You guys are gonna freak out when you see what I'm giving away for free. Would you, you're gonna freak out. For example, next week, which I don't know my subject yet, it might be on bone density. I might be do, doing something on bone density. I try to like switch back and forth because 
it's not all about what you look like, you guys. It's about living longer and the function of your body, the function of your muscles, the function of your bones. How are you holding up? It's all of that. It's not just, we're not chasing wrinkles here. We're not chasing every wrinkle. I'm 55. I'll never catch every wrinkle and that's okay. I'm improving the health of the skin. I'm improving the health of the skin, but this sucker, <laughs> this sucker is going to be given away for free next week. So that's when the drawing starts. Um, I have radio frequency devices I'm gonna be giving away. I've got some microcurrent devices I'm gonna be giving away. They're all gonna start on the Saturday Lives next week. And that's when I'm gonna have you guys invite your three friends with that little arrow down there. And we're gonna tag three people when I post it to my main site. And we're gonna give away thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of stuff between now and Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. Okay, that's it. I'm going. That's all I got for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow for a demo. I don't know what I'm demoing yet. Um, I booked another sh that show in New York again, New York Living, so I'm excited about that. And another show in New Jersey called Waking Up with Marcy. And so I'm leaving on Tuesday to go to New York. So I'll be in New York for a couple days shooting those two shows. Um, so I don't know what I'm doing yet for next week. And But I will see you guys tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I'll do something. I'll do some sort of demo. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Um, it's always at 11. Somebody said, what time next Saturday? Every Saturday, I'm here at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every Sunday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm doing a demo on Sundays, which goes to my subscription club, the $4.99 subscription club. That's where all of the exclusive content is, is held. That's um, my Sunday demo. So that goes to my subscri subscription club. Oh my God, I'm tongue-tied. Um, but my Saturday lives, that's where I'm going to be doing the giveaways. And that's every Saturday, 11 a.m. from now until whenever. But every Saturday is going to be a giveaway. And we've got some major, I mean, I don't know how much this is, but I think it's over $400. But we have some major, major giveaways coming up. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for a demo, kind of casual demo, no teaching involved, but just answering a lot of questions. Um, how do you get on your Amazon? If you go, if you look at my profile, you'll see like a link in my profile that said that will be my linked tree. From that link, you'll see the Amazon icon and you can click on that and it'll bring you to the Amazon store. So everything I talked about today, except for the agency and except for the prescription, um, tretinoin, all of that's on the Amazon store. Just wanted to, and I put it all at the top. So I wanted to make it super easy for you guys. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow for a demo and I'll see you next Saturday where we start the whole giveaway holiday season. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.